going, folks? Thanks for stopping by another ADHD video series on neurotransmitters. So for today, we're going to be working on acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that those of us with ADHD lack because of a gene mutation in correlation with something called choline. So... We'll take a little gander later on and see what that's all about. But for now, let's get familiar with acetylcholine. Let's do it. neurotransmitter that deals with muscle contraction, pain responses, mood regulation, REM sleep, and coordination. It also is important for the formation of new memories. So if we take a look at those things, yeah, that's going to cause a lot of issues, especially if we got low levels of it. Think about it. Mood swings, muscle contractions, feeling uncomfortable, while you're sitting, your leg may be falling asleep while you're on the ground. Really difficult finding that sweet spot maybe when you're trying to sleep or things of that nature. So the list goes further. Let's continue on. Now, what happens when we got low levels of acetylcholine? Now, low levels of acetylcholine cause low energy levels of fatigue, memory loss, Cognitive decline, learning disabilities, muscle aches, nerve damage, mood changes, or disorders. So, interestingly enough, we do a lot of things. People do a lot of things to try to raise their acetylcholine levels up. So, a very common thing people do to do that, and they might not even know, is cigarettes. What do cigarettes provide? They provide nicotine. Now nicotine, when it hits the acetylcholine receptors in the brain, it latches onto them and it causes the brain to mimic what acetylcholine does. It's kind of like an invader almost. There's one catch. Unfortunately, it wears off quite quickly. Which is why some of you watching who smoke cigarettes, maybe, or a friend, or maybe you've noticed this in a friend that they need to have their smoke break a little frequently, maybe every 45 minutes. I hung around with some friends, they can't go 15 minutes without smoking a cigarette. It's like they need that acetylcholine boost, and I'm pretty sure they have ADHD, because the symptoms that they have really are very reminiscent of ADHD. So you probably noticed that some of these people that need to have cigarettes often, they probably maybe are a bit more jittery or just they just look constantly on at like not at ease, just uncomfortable, just kind of always like, you know, maybe on edge. Yeah, lacking acetylcholine can do that to you. It can make you feel really uncomfortable physically in different areas of your body, perhaps due to muscle contraction problems. So, a cigarette can mimic that, but it just does it just for a few minutes. It doesn't last that long. I'm not exactly sure how long it lasts. I think it varies from individual, but you'll notice that people who smoke cigarettes, especially if they have ADHD, uh, they like to have them maybe a bit more frequently. So, it's different for everybody. But, nicotine does mimic what acetylcholine does. So... What would be advised? What can we do? What can we do if we want to boost up acetylcholine? Maybe through the diet. Moving on. Remember earlier how I mentioned choline? Well, let's find out now what the correlation between acetylcholine and choline is. Choline. What is choline? What does it have to do with acetylcholine? Choline is a macronutrient that is important for muscle movement nerve function, and brain development, just to name a few. It can be found in beef, liver, eggs, salmon, etc. Choline is also highly important for making acetylcholine, 
Let me reemphasize. Choline is also highly important for making acetylcholine. So where exactly does the root of the problem stand? Especially for those who consume a high choline diet. The root of the issue is in how the brain of someone with ADHD transports choline. There is apparently a gene variation within the presynaptic choline transporter CHT SLC5A7 for those of you who want to know. That causes an upregulation when we need to have sustained attention. So basically, acetylcholine is being taken away just a bit too quick. And that's going to give us some trouble. So, since acetylcholine is dependent on the production of choline, and apparently our good friend choline here has a gene mutation, just like B12, hint, hint, that'll be the next video. B12, we also have a gene mutation, and so there you go, a little trailer. So, moving on, choline, since we lack that, we're also going to lack acetylcholine. That's where the problem lies, unfortunately. So with ADHD, we see that there's issue with a lot of upregulation. When we should have a bit more dopamine, we don't. Because maybe we might not have enough receptors, or the reuptake is too quick, or both, or a variety of other reasons. And because of that, we have issues with norepinephrine as well. So these gene mutations really do cause a big issue in our neurochemistry. It can sometimes make the ADHD worse. But I truly believe that a diet and different means of working out and treatment for those who are down to take it, whether it's medication or whether it's supplements, all of that can make a gigantic positive difference in your life. It just takes effort and follow-up. So, I have a video on supplements for anyone who's interested. And there should be a link above if you want to check that out because when you have ADHD, you have issues with multiple neurotransmitters, not just one. And stimulant medication, which is the common medication offered for people with ADHD, just works on dopamine and norepinephrine. But we have issues of other neurotransmitters as well. So I think, if, for my opinion, if you want to cover the full gamut, so to speak, take the ADHD head on in its entirety, you got to knock out, and, or help out rather, those neurotransmitters that need help as well. So, just something for you to check out if you'd like. There's also cer certain supplements that help out multiple neurotransmitters at once. So, should be a link above if you want to check that out. Anyway, moving on. Now, some of you are probably wondering, wait a minute now there, Wilhelm, what if I got a diet where I eat a lot of food that already has a lot of choline in it? Well, let's find out. That could be helpful, but keep in mind, when you got a gene mutation issue, that means one of the transporters of the neurotransmitters, one of the main ones, slacking off on the job. It's not doing what it's supposed to. It's not producing enough of it. So we can eat a ton of steak or whatever the hell has a lot of choline and that probably won't make as much of a difference. Now someone who doesn't have the gene mutation, oh yeah, that'll probably make a huge difference. But in our case, we might need a little extra help because certain supplements, what ends up happen, happening is that certain neurotransmitters, they have their precursors meaning that there's other neurotransmitters that eventually become that neurotransmitter. So in this case, there is options for that. That's what I love about supplements is that you can tackle these ADHD issues head on and they can really make a big difference. So though, for those who want to know what diet, what food we can intake to help out with acetylcholine and choline, let's take a gander. What foods help out? Foods that assist with choline slash acetylcholine. That includes beef, as mentioned, liver, eggs, salmon. So that might not be the best ideal diet for some. I completely understand. But those are some of the foods that have 
Wait a bit of calling. Slash so of calling. Now then, what about helpful supplements for acetylcholine? What can we take that would assist in that regard? We have the infamous, and my favorite, our alpha lipoic acid. It's a supplement that is a powerhouse of an antioxidant, and that will really help your body and brain fight off oxidation. Oxidation comes from flat out just going outside of some areas, or from taking stimulant medication, bad diet, etc., etc. So... We need to consume quite a bit of antioxidants, and some of us, we don't consume a lot of berries, we don't consume a lot of deep leafy greens, or some of us, our diet just flat out sucks, let's be honest. But, fret not, there is hope. Supplements like r lipoic acid are really helpful as an antioxidant, and in our case, for this video, helpful for acetylcholine. It's a supplement that when I started taking it, it really helped me calm down. It really helped me arrange my thoughts in a more cohesive manner, in a more calmer manner. It just really diminished like this unease or sense of anxiousness. And my body felt really comfortable as well. I never realized how tense I was until I started taking our alpha lipoic acid. So that's a supplement I've been taking for a couple of years and one that remains in my mix of supplements. Second one on the list, we have CDP choline. Interestingly enough, it also helps slightly with dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, which are the giants when it comes to the neurotransmitters of difficulty in ADHD. So, you're really killing multiple birds of one stone there. Think about it. You're knocking out acetylcholine, you're knocking out dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin as well. Now, a little heed of advice on my behalf. I tried CDP choline for a little bit, and I have inattentive ADHD, and it left me like even more lethargic. So I was like, I can't continue to do this. But for some people who have ADHD who are wired, who feel constantly hyped up or just have too much energy and can't mellow out, perhaps after talking to your healthcare provider, that might be something you'd like to try. And as a reminder, if you're going to try supplements, do talk to your healthcare provider or whoever you go and see. That way, you'll make sure that nothing funky will happen to you. So, moving on. Third option, Alpha GPC. Interestingly enough, also helps out with dopamine. This is not one I've tried, so I really don't have any sort of anecdotal evidence that it worked or anything like that, but I've heard some people say that it works quite well for them, so it might for you. I don't know. It might. Anyway, though, as we have seen, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter of major importance when it comes to ADHD. Those of us who lack it are probably going to be tense quite often, are probably going to feel pretty brutal sometimes, might misinterpret certain things, might feel really tense and not at ease a lot of the time because our body doesn't feel good. And if our body doesn't feel good, then we're not going to feel good. So perhaps something to look into, acetylcholine, hopefully either the diet or some of the supplements or tips or advice was of some help to you. Or someone you know. So let's keep the information alive. Let's keep ADHD awareness alive. And let's do what we can to spread the cause. This is your ADHD comrade Wilhelm. Over and out.